Excellent. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Good evening. You're all very welcome. And can I just say, Happy Black Friday, everyone. The government has imploded, our future is in turmoil, but you might get 20% off a Nutribullet. Mmm. <laughs> Yay. Hey, we've got a great show tonight. I've got so many stars, and I didn't even have to do a Bush Tucker trial. No. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, that's poor Anne Hegarty on uh, I'm a Celebrity, being covered in fish guts and mealworms. I mean, I can't remember the last time a harmless middle-aged woman was so humiliated. Theresa meeting Jean-Claude in Brussels this week. I mean, basically, Brexit is now like a bush trucker trial, isn't it? You know, would you rather eat crocodile penis or kangaroo's anus? Cos, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be one or the other. All right. <laughs> Pucker up, Terry. Uh, <laughs> Labour has said... Labour has said they will use any tools to stop a no-deal Brexit. You think, what, even this one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but... No, no, no. <laughs> bias. BBC bias. But finally, in the United States, it was Thanksgiving yesterday, and at the White House, President Trump performed the traditional pardoning of a turkey. Oh, there's Donald <laughs> holding on tight so she doesn't escape. And he's doing the same thing with the turkey. <laughs> Easy. Oh. <laughs> hey, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll be chatting to cycling champion Gern Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll have music from Pop Icons. Take that! <laughs> First, he's one of our top stand-up comedians. He sold out three UK tours and become a regular on our TV screens. It's a first-time welcome to the hilarious Joe Lysett, everyone! <laughs> That's Joe Lysett! He's an award-winning writer, comedian, actor, presenter, and all-round brain box. Please welcome back the great Stephen Fry! <laughs> My dear fellow, no. And this Aussie export turned Hollywood superstar has lit up the screens in Moulin Rouge, Big Little Lies, and with her Oscar winning turn in the hours, now playing an LAPD detective in crime thriller Destroyer, it is a warm welcome back to Nicole Kidman! <laughs> Hi. Lovely. Oh. It's show business. It's show business. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, Nicole Thank and Stephen. You. And Joe, Joe's first time. Yes, oh. hello. Hello. I feel like I've won a competition. <laughs> 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 no, good prize, though, because I know you are quite a fan of Nicole Kidman. I love Nicole Kidman. Yes. So, um, I didn't say when we met back there because it seemed inappropriate, but uh, I used to listen when I was a kid, I used to listen to the Moulin Rouge soundtrack every time I went to school and I would always oh. sing your bits because <laughs> yeah, I was a little yeah. queer, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, Nicole Kidman, you have been dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century. You've joined the Instagram. I have. <gasps> yes. But not kicking and screaming. Oh, you, you've embraced it. I kind of went, oh, OK, this is, um, yeah. Yeah. This is me having some fun, and there I am. I'm in it now. But now there is. But I dabble. Yeah. If you haven't can't followed, say I'm if you haven't followed Nicole, if you like cats, the place to be. There's a lot of cat action. <laughs> but I sound but, riveting. <laughs> no, wait. wait I'm wait. a cat woman. I'm, I'm about to get you a lot of followers here because okay. you posted this action sequence. Uh, this is in LA, is it? Oh, I know it. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> OK, um, so you're, this yes. is in LA. Are you the, talking about the spider? Yes, yeah. yeah. So, and the, mm. the screaming sounds are presumably your children. Yes. Who sound, children. do sound terrified. And, yes. and we can see why. Uh, can oh. I say, I must just say, before we watch this, given that you work in film, yeah. the camera work isn't great, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I dabble. <laughs> but, uh, I'm but, dabbling I'm, I'm in this you were very hole. nervous at the time. You were very yeah. nervous, so we'll excuse it all. This is uh, Nicole filming in her garden in LA. <laughs> Help! <laughs> it's the size of your head. <laughs> uh, what did you I mean? Because it's one thing to get it in the jam jar. What? No, it, it was very hard getting it in the jar. I put the jar on it, and then it knocked the jar over. 
<laughs> very, very strong. It was a tarantula. But I'm Australian. We grew up with uh, spiders. Of course. So, um, but I did, and I released the spider, I have to say. I'm one of those people that doesn't kill anything. In a neighbor's garden. I don't even kill anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sat in yours yep. listening to the screams. <laughs> I did have a lot of neighbors saying, did you really catch that? Was that real? I'm like, yeah, it was totally real. I'm going to Australia next year. Should I? No, that's LA. That was, no, that, was that was in LA. LA. Sorry, OK, fine. You're all right, you're fine. Don't yeah. worry, Mind ben. you, yeah, there's yeah. worse in Australia. Much worse. <laughs> but, yeah, I was going to say, you yeah. grew up there. So, yeah. 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 And, but I'm not frightened of snakes. Either I don't have a no. I'm kind of very. I'm very into reptiles and insects. <laughs> Move on. Good to know. Because <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, right now, because you were one of the earliest people on Twitter. You kind of really yeah. took it up. But now you have a kind of love-hate thing. Are you on it at the moment or off it? At oh the yes, I'm on it. I've been on it for some years still. Yeah. I, I, but I suppose the difference is now that I don't really engage as much. You, yes. you just can't. So it, if you think of it as a notice, you put the notice up on the notice board mm. and then you run away before watching anybody read it. So I don't get, oh. you know, yeah. the, the... It's yes. what's... It's the comments and the unkindness. I, I'm very sensitive. It's pathetic, uh, after all these years that I am. But I, I liken it to a swimming pool. People always say to me, oh, but 99% of all the comments you get are very friendly and nice. And I go, yeah, but if you said 99% of the swimming pool is clear, there's just one little turd in the corner, <laughs> I still <laughs> wouldn't get in the pool. Yeah, yeah. It just ruins it for me, unfortunately. <laughs> Because uh, Joe likes it. You, you like social media. You I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. I spend too much time on it. Mm. But I agree, like, I am quite sensitive to it as well. And Instagram I find to be a lot nicer it's, than Twitter. Is, yes. I don't know why that is. I think maybe because it's visual-based. Yeah. But, I, yeah, and, and I, the thing is I'm a bit of a dickhead on Instagram, really, cos I... <laughs> so you'll what? find this now that you're on Instagram. I'm now going to follow you. Yes, do, please. <laughs> 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 you also do selfies with celebrities. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, I love doing yeah. selfies with celebrities. But you, you have a particular way of doing them. Yeah, cos I think, you know, everyone's gonna do, like, a... Uh, and all of that stuff. Um, I don't want those. So I, um, I like to have a drink with celebrities, as we are doing this evening, so I'll often hold the glass directly in front of the face <laughs> of the person I'm taking the picture with. And it's a good... It's a good game. Never. So we've got, we've got some here. So That's this is... Brilliant. Now, you know who that is. <laughs> you know who that is, Stephen. Do I? Yes, I couldn't have guessed it either. Oh. Does anyone know who that is? <laughs> well done, it's Norm yeah. Fresh. God. Yes. I was going to yeah. say that. You're right. Were you? Oh, who got asked? Ooh. Who's up next? Who's up next? Now, who's that? Philip Larkin. No, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, was, I, was, I was having lunch with Philip yeah. Larkin. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyone? Harry Hill. Harry Hill, oh. correct. Yeah. Well done. Ow. And uh, the final one's easy. The final one's easy. Who's that? Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Yes, it is. I love doing it because it's so rude. Yes. <laughs> that all incredibly on the glass does things. Yes. Yes. But we it's... thought we could do a kind of a, a triple whammy for you tonight. Yes, please. Uh, using one of our cameras. Yes. And I've got a special wine glass that we can all fit in it. <laughs> OK. Oh, so my God. If you hold... <laughs> if you hold this... What is that? Brilliant. OK, if we stand up... Yeah, stand, stand up. up. Yes! OK, so you hold it with... Can you hold it with one hand? Yes, I can. This camera, this, one this camera. So there's the little monitor on it. OK. We've got to look so through, we're all the here. through the Hang on, so I get, if I you get You go closer to the thing and then we all... Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes nearer, 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 like that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yep, we're in now. I saw that in the corridor. <laughs> and you were thinking Graham's problems got worse. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll leave that there. I hope that it does was get... absolute heaven. Thank you guys for doing that. You're yeah. very right. Any You're thought? very right. Yeah. Uh, you can Instagram it later. <laughs> now, we start this evening, ladies and gentlemen, with Nicole Kidman. These two films coming out very close together. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about uh, the first one first. Uh, it's a crime <laughs> thriller called Destroyer. Yes. And this one opens uh, 25th of January. And oh. you, you play a, a... Well, there you are. That, that's you. you. You play an LAPD detective. Mm -hmm. But we discover early on that you'd been undercover in a sort mm. of cult gang. Is that fair to call them? Like... Yeah. I mean, it's gone undercover to, um, to work and try to discover what's going on in this sort of... Yeah, cult, really. And, um, and then you meet her, which is what you saw the picture of. 17 years later, and it's the the ramifications of the choices that she made and the things she did, and 
it's a really um, tough, gritty um, film, which is something I've never done, and I'm always looking for a new, new territory to explore, and it was with a female director, Karen Kusama, and I'm on a crusade to support female directors right now, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's a it's a great story because a lot of films are quite kind of linear in how they tell the yeah. story, but this is a really complicated, layered story, isn't it? Yeah, but it's also set. It's got a fantastic twist, which yes. is what I love. So it's set against that genre, you know, cop drama um, sort of backdrop, but it's really a strong, strong character. And she is this really kind of broken, damaged mm. uh, creature. <clears throat> Was that? hard, you know, to go home at night with that, you know, particularly for Keith, your kids, all those, you know, the, your friends, was it, was it weird? My husband was like, when does this end? <laughs> because um, I think a lot of time, you know, as an actor, you take on things and, and some of them you can shed and walk away from easily and others, and particularly for this, I kind of, I had to live it. I couldn't just, I didn't want to feel like I was putting on a performance. It needed, and because a lot of the film is very much set on um, the, it's sparse in terms of it di its dialogue, it needs to kind of be coming through my pores and seeping out of me, and the idea of performing that, um, I just didn't know how to do it, so I kind of had to live it. I was a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm through it now. Yeah, you I'm are. to me. Yeah. So you, you're yeah. a sort of Daniel Day-Lewis, you inhabited no, completely. No, nowhere near oh, as right. good as him, but <laughs> um, yes, Daniel's... And, and also, we should say that it's, it's not just about the cult gang, you're also a, a mother, and you're trying to kind I of am. make amends. So we've got a clip, and this is you oh. with your daughter sort of trying to be a better mother. Yes. Having been a bad mother. Yes. But then, so we just when we were, you know, going, wow, you're very good in that, uh, you play a totally different uh, mother, emotionally, physically, everything, yeah. in Boy Erased. Uh, that one comes out on the 8th of January. January is really Nicole Kidman month. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and this... I'm a supporting role in that. <laughs> but, but it's based on this uh, a memoir, a young guy, gay guy who gets mm -hmm. sent to a Christian conversion camp. Mm. And you're the mother, Russell Crowe's the dad. Yes. And it's weird because you going into the film, I sort of imagined what sort of parents you would be. Yeah. But it, you're not. Like you, it comes. You're not monsters. No, I think what's interesting, and um, for me, seeing their relationship. I mean, his mother puts him into a conversion um, therapy camp, which um, is, you know, that was the choice that um, that his father and his mother made, thinking it was the most loving thing to do. Subsequently, when she was waiting in the hotel for weeks on end and he started to really show signs of distress and um, turmoil, she, com she completely said, this is the wrong thing. She went and took him out. And with that, what, um, she's subsequently made huge amends to him, an apology, and their relationship is extraordinary. It's so intimate. Um, it was a beautiful thing to... Be able to tell this story where there's no real villains. So it sort of turns it upside down. It, it, it starts off that they think they're trying to heal the boy, but in yeah. fact they're the ones who need the healing. In fact. As well, Martha says, um, she was the one that needed converting. Because even you've met some of these people. Haven't you? I you do. Did, I, when I you did get out there. Documentary on homophobia around the world called Out There, and I, I saw this fellow called Pelosi, uh, uh, who was a gay conversion therapist. It was quite a chilling encounter, and I spoke to s some of the failures uh, because they're all failures. I mean, you've only got to think of it this way: imagine a camp in which people go in order to try and make a natural heterosexual into a natural gay. It's just preposterous. Anyone mm -hmm. heterosexual? There, do you think you could be converted? No, don't well, do you? Do actually, you? I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the show, I will try. <laughs> He's here. He's got to have a go. But, you know, Bob put the work in. <laughs> yeah. It's bad enough, with, you know, trying to make left-handers, you know, right-handed. Yeah. It's just a kind of cruel stupidity that, really, it, it is so sad. Yeah, right. It's sad. Yeah. Really. But how, how do they go about it? Like, how, what is the technique? <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe I'll... You've got to see the film. OK, yeah. I'll watch the film. It, it, read I mean, the book, see the I'll film. come out and be like, I'm going down the rigs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like um, Tom like Orange, you know, where they make him watch yeah. films that go, kind of make him sick. It's not an aversion therapy. It's mm. just endless. Mm. But, but what's nice is how the world changes. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, Joe, your, your coming out was almost too easy for your taste. Pissy, you say. Because my parents were what like... Easy? Pissy. Oh. OK. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I didn't piss yeah. during yeah, it. No, no, no. <laughs> Good friend. Um, it's easy. Piss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He wrote, I'm gay in yeah. the snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but may I ask him... Um, oh, my God! Uh, yeah. But uh, whose handwriting was it? <laughs> 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 Love it. <laughs> Keep going, Joe. Keep going. Yes, I, yeah. I will. Well, so I'm bisexual, and I um, I came out um, to my dad when I was on my 21st birthday, and he was just so lovely about it, and he just said, "That's fine, as long as you're happy. Really? I really don't mind." And I was sort of pissed off about it because I kind of <laughs> I wanted there to be a battle, so I was like, you know, just do, like punch me, give me something. <laughs> and, um, and so I sort of tried to escalate it. So I was like, "I'm, I'm taking drugs." And so I was, don't tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, you get nothing out of it. But then you tell a story about a friend of yours uh, uh, who came out to his mom. Yes, it's my favourite coming out story of all time. Um, it's my friend Sam, and he was very, very nervous about coming out, as lots of people are. Um, and he is a full gay, um, not a bisexual, <laughs> um, fully signed up. <laughs> and um, full blown. Full blown <laughs> gay. Full blown. Um, <laughs> yeah. And he, uh, he just decided, he had like, this moment, he was like, I'm going to tell her. And he was in the house and she was in the bath. So he um, knocked on the bathroom door and she was like, what is it? And he said, I've got something to tell you. So she put a towel around and she came to the door and she said, what is it? And he went, Mum, I'm gay. And she went, well, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Though it was slightly weird that she thought she did need it when she... Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole other she was issue. irresistible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now, Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry... Yes, sir. Uh, ...brings us... Well, I say sequel, it's more of a continuation... Yes, continue. ...of your best-selling yeah, book right. of Greek mythology, Mythos. This is Heroes. Uh, it's out now. Yes. And, I mean, the first one was such a huge hit. It was, wasn't it? It was a big surprise to me. I was delighted by it. I've always... Love Greek myths, and mm. I actually it started. I found myself a year and a half ago. It's around a table at someone's house, and we were all just talking about creation myths and where they come from. And I started telling the story of the early Greek gods, the first ones, and they all went, "Why, why didn't I know about that?" And you know, where Zeus came from, because everyone's heard mm. of certain names, but they don't necessarily know how they go together. And someone said, "Well, you should write them." So I, I started to, and now it, uh, this one is it carries on to the yes. heroes. Yes, yeah. this is more of the human. Exactly. Slash By this thought. time, as it were, it's getting to be more human, and they're clearing up the world, ridding it of monsters and so on. And because it's written in this very kind of conversational way, all the dialogue yes. is very kind of everyday. Mm. Is that you kind of trying to get the reader to make connections between these stories and our own lives? Sort of. I mean, there's no question that for a lot of people, just a Greek word looks somehow as if it belongs more to a schoolroom than to a story, because we think of Greek as being an academic thing, ancient Greek, whereas, of course, to the Greeks it wasn't and it isn't now. And I also wanted to create an atmosphere um, my favourite Greek god in some ways is Hestia, perhaps the least well-known of the firstborn of the Olympians, who's the goddess of the hearth. And, and the hearth, mm. when you think about it, all our ancestors, whatever our ethnicity, all our ancestors gathered around flames at night to, to stay warm and to protect themselves from animals, and they told stories about things over which they had no control, like where does they tell their children where thunder comes from and why there's fire coming out of the mountain. And everything you can't understand and control. You give a name, a god, uh, and so these mm. gods were uh, developed personalities around the fire. And, and now, I think we can safely say we've lost the hearth. You know, we don't eat round tables anymore. Uh, someone's got a PlayStation in that room and they, they get a delivery of pizza into it, and someone else has got another... They're streaming things in another room. Nobody gathers round and shares stories anymore. We've lost our focus. We've lost our hearth. So I'm trying in the books to recreate the, the relaxed feeling of sitting around a fire listening to stories, which I think is a primal thing, listening them together. Um, and so that's, that's mm. the purpose So it's it. to do with arson. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously there's lots, of, there's lots of gods, lots of heroes, but 
does Queen Atlana appear <laughs> in... Oh, God. <laughs> well, I should say, of course, happily, yeah. that uh, I'm using the word hero as a gender-neutral word. There's Atalanta, who's my, one of my favourite heroes. Um, and Atlana is in your film yes, Aquaman. Exactly. Yes. yes, you're playing Queen Atlana. Not my film. Well, Mark I'm... Urban's film, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. It's you're in it. Jason yeah. Momoa's film. Yeah, yeah. Um, James Wan's film, yeah. Well, yeah. you'd be named... I guess that's Atlantis, is it? Mm -hmm. Well, the the, Queen Atlanta is Queen of Atlantis. Well, there's a good example of how these things kind of uh, mm. go into our language. Is that uh, At At Atlas? <laughs> Atlas was a Titan who who fought in the War of the Titans yeah. against the gods, and his punishment, because he was the most severe enemy of Zeus and the Olympians, was to hold up the sky. Yeah, and he. That image of him bulging like a Bulgarian weightlifter holding up the sky was used by early uh, mappers of the world, which, and they called those maps atlases after, yeah. after him, the picture of the world. Oh, okay. and, and so it's all connected. So you're Atalanti, well, presumably you're Atlanti, is that her name? Atlanta. Atlanta. There you yes. are. There you are. Yeah. Can't be related. Look, we're all, yeah. we're all like, you're it's so very... smart. Oh, shh. Tell it's story time. <laughs> it's really... No, no, Nicole, I can't tell you how smart. Like, oh, you can't write... so he smart. know this. Oh, he know this. Uh, but... What's your IQ? No, I... it's, uh, no, it's uh, reasonable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no one fifty. Nothing good. Um, <laughs> And, of course, your other fascination is with the Victorians. Yes. Uh, you've got this uh, podcast, Victorian Secrets. What is it about the Victorians that you like so much? Uh, uh, oh, dear. I, I think it's the... <laughs> <laughs> the it's six... Sell that podcast. It's like six <laughs> audiobooks, really, and, and it's the gap between what the Victorians presented and what they were underneath, and what they were underneath, of course, is really no different to what we are, but it, it seems that they were more extreme in their sexuality and their oddity because they hid it so primly. So, for example, I mean, one of the episodes is about women criminals. I mean, there's a there's a there's a, a murderess in there who's probably responsible for over 400 deaths. It's extraordinary. And there's a there was a gang called the Forty Elephants, run by women, a, a, a criminal gang of extraordinary violence and power that ran South London. And these are not that long ago. Our, our great great grandfathers. And, and, and audiobooks, obviously, are, are hugely popular now. Mm. You, you do your own. Yeah. Uh, but with Heroes, you, you gave uh, everyone accents. Yeah, yes. well... Like you, they're, it's from, very... they're from places. Well, when you have people like Tiresias, who's a prophet, it's very hard not to go into Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> because <laughs> somehow it's that kind of voice. <laughs> and, and, and so there's, mm. you know, it's that sort of... Um, it, it, we want to connect. Uh, otherwise, what are you going to do? A Greek accent? I can hardly do that. That would be hopeless. <laughs> uh, and it would, they'd all sound the same. So yeah. so, yeah, and Perseus, for some reason, you know, was Yorkshire, because he's... I don't know why it just turned out that way. <laughs> You've got to try and distinguish them. Uh, yeah. that's, and but none even, of them Australian, I'm afraid. But even you make mistakes. What was the problem... Uh, you, you, you've told me that on the Harry Potter audiobooks... Oh, Lord, don't. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I love doing the Harry Potter books. So, uh, <clears throat> How many hours of Harry Potter have you done in total? I can't remember. It's seven books, isn't it? It's a lot. And they got longer and longer each time yeah, yeah. Um, from the first one onwards. And uh, Joe Rowling was very... Um, convinced from the beginning that they should not be condensed or abridged, that they should be absolutely as she'd written them. Because she figured, and quite rightly, I think, that a lot of children would read them with their fingers going along, you know, they'd listen to them rather, their fingers following the text. And that was a good way to reinforce reading, apart from anything else. So, on the third one, I think it was, called The Prisoner of Azkaban, there would just happened to be a three-word phrase that, for some reason, I couldn't get out of my mouth properly. It was, Harry Pocket did it. I still can't say it. <laughs> Harry Pocket did it. Harry Pocket, and I was, I went like this for about 10 minutes. Harry Pocket did it. The engineer was laughing, everybody was laughing. Uh, I said, Look, we'll park that. I'll try and solve it at, 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 at lunchtime. And at lunchtime, I called up Joe Rowling because she wasn't in the studio. And I said, Joe, would it be all right if instead of saying Harry Pocket did it, did it <laughs> could I say Harry put it in his pocket? Which I can say easily. <laughs> and she, I could almost hear her smiling as she said, No. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, in the subsequent four Harry Potter books, she made sure the phrase Harry Potter did it was in there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was our thing. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Uh, uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Lyson has a new comedy DVD for us. Yes. There it is. <laughs> it's called I'm About to Lose Control, and I think Joe likes it. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Cool. You I, like these titles. You like the oh, yeah, titles. Yeah, it's when you like have to come up with a title before it goes on tour and all that. I don't know what the show's going to be, so I just do a pun title. So, yeah, that's the... I'm they running out. They turned up and kept him mentoring. That, <laughs> that could be the next one. Yeah. I am looking for more, because I've had some Lyset hot, 
Um, <laughs> if Jay likes it, then you should have put a ring on it. Hey! That's good. Um, yeah. Do you really like it? Is it, is it wicked? <laughs> I'm looking for more, I am, so yeah. if you have any, I mean, yeah. I imagine you're probably and good at you, And you see this in the shop, you kind of think, oh, yes, it's a DVD, but no, it's so much more. <gasps> you take this off, and look, there's art. What? Did you paint this? Yes, so some of the show is about <laughs> art. <laughs> and some of it's about Tom Daly, so I painted Tom Daly. That's Tom that's in Tom. action. And who's that, then? That's, um, that's a sculpture that I made called Chris. Which, um, was this someone in the Royal Academy? Yes, it took me ten minutes to make it. It's got a Pringles tube in the middle, and I was pissed when I did it. And, um, <laughs> but it got accepted. I submitted it for a laugh to the Royal Academy, and it ended up there, so I listed it for twelve and a half million pounds. <laughs> um, it's not yet sold. I did, I did a flash sale down to a million, because I thought, I might, there might be some idiot. <laughs> uh, but no, it didn't sell. I'm a trustee of the Royal Academy, and I'm not amused. <laughs> Yeah, just, yeah. When you, just when you think, I've enjoyed the art, I've enjoyed the art, surely Looks my, my physical enjoyment of this is finished. Oh, no. <laughs> you open it up, and oh, even the DVD itself oh. is a joy to behold. Oh, yeah, that was literally because they there was a bit of a rush when they were producing it, and they said, we need a picture of you from the, for the DVD. <laughs> so I just took a selfie and sent that. <laughs> And actually, now people hold it in front of their faces and... Is it actual size? Is that the size of your face? Well, let's have a go. I mean, it's I... sort of close enough, isn't it? <laughs> there you go, yes! That's nice work! Yeah! Yeah. That's brilliant! <laughs> well, you appear to have a tan on your DVD. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Well, that was taken in the bath as well. <laughs> I do most of my admin in the bath. <laughs> now, a lot of... Uh, a lot of... The, you, you, you do talk about uh, social media and trolling and things, uh, but your mom... Your mom is now on Twitter. Yes. So that is one reason to be frightened, Stephen. <laughs> um, <laughs> a little drop of shit in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> So my my mum uses it to stalk me basically on on social media ah, yeah. because um, I don't often tell her what I'm up to, but people will tweet saying they've seen me out and about or they've seen me. They might a chem take a sex picture. party or whatever. Yes, yeah. a, a chem sex party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so your mother just follows you and knows where you are. Every so time. she well she'll oh, search my smart, name, see what I'm doing. Oh. And the, uh, it was a terrible thing that happened. I um, said to her one morning I was going to Manchester to see my friend Josephine to have a, a light lunch because I was trying to be healthy. And then I went to Manchester and got shit-faced with Josephine <laughs> and had a pasty on the train on the way back <laughs> to soak up the alcohol. And I got home and Mum said, oh, you're being healthy, are you? And I said, like, yeah, I mean, I had a glass of wine, but I had a salad for lunch. And she said, explain this. And somebody had taken a picture of me on the train. We've got it. Here is the picture oh. of you on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Deep throating a pasta. <laughs> deep throating a pasta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then you do get your own back on your mother. That uh... oh yeah, I like to do sort of tweets that are sort of loosely to do with her, but um, she gets very offended by them. So the one that I did was um, it was a uh, yes a joke tweet uh, to find out your dirty prostitute name. Take your mother's surname and put her first name in front of it. <laughs> 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 It got, it got a thousand retweets, so... <laughs> uh, now, you do talk about growing up in Birmingham because you don't sound, to my ear anyway, you don't sound like you're from Birmingham. No, I've got a lilt, yeah. so, um, are you... I mean, you'll be familiar with the Brummie accent, mm -hmm. but are you familiar with the Brummie accent? Brummie. Uh... Brummie, it's sort of Brummie. quite like that, all right. Um, I don't understand a word you're saying. Oh, um, <laughs> you should go to the black country, that's where it's real fun. Um, <laughs> so in the black country, they, they, they've mm. got Dude proper, they. like, dud lie. They sort of chalk like that. I've got no neck and no future for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I went on a speed awareness course in the black country last year because I'm an absolute badass. Yes. And, I, um, <laughs> and there was a woman at the back who I became obsessed with because she, like, just had no respect for the whole course. And she, um, the guy came out and he's really patronising. He was going, like, why do we speed, guys? Why do we speed? And she went, cos I'm in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he said, any reasons why, why it might be justifiable to speed? And um, I didn't chip, like, no-one was chipping in cos I didn't want to speak. Mm. And she just went, well, if there's an emergency, if you've got to take someone to hospital... And he went, no, that's not a reason. You've still got to be safe. If you hit someone on the way to hospital, that's two people going to hospital. And she went, that's lucky, I'm going that way. I give him a lift. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Obsessed with her. Uh, okay, let's have a, a, a clip <laughs> from uh, Joe's deep. <laughs> right. It's 
time to meet our next guest. This cyclist has won two Olympic golds, three world championships, a Commonwealth gold, and he's just won the toughest bike race in the world, the Tour de France. Please welcome Gernt Thomas! Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, I thought that had. Hello. Have a seat, dude. Yeah. That's who that yeah, is. Yeah. And you're very welcome. Uh, thanks for being here. Now, normally, when, you know, someone comes they've just won a big world thing or two, they bring the trophy, but you uh -huh. are unable to bring the trophy. Yeah, um, basically, uh, the team had it on a, on a show. It was actually in Birmingham. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Lovely on Mum's mantelpiece. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically, it got it got nicked. Somebody came on the show and just took it as it was on display and it wasn't being watched. And um, so yeah, it, it, but have they um, not returned it? No, no. It's one of those. It's kind of like, what, what are you going to do with it? You can't really sell it, can you? Yeah. And like I so say, it's probably in some old lady's front room with some mm. fruit in. His mother's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a text round for you, see if anyone's seen it. <laughs> now, you've written a book all about the Tour de France. Here you are. Uh, Geraint Thomas, take the tour according to G. and Because everyone calls you G. Yeah, because obviously Geraint is... Unless you're Welsh, people find it quite hard. The Germans are good, but the English, yeah. not so. And the Irish, apparently, quite bad. Are they? Well, I don't know. Am I saying it right? I don't know. Try again. I said it earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I got away with it, good. <laughs> I'm, now, now that I've held out the book, I'm just going to G. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the book is very encouraging, because uh, ten years ago, you did your first Tour de France. Tour de France. And uh, how many people... How many cyclists? Was there 141 or 142 riders that year? Uh, there was more to start with, but 141 finished. And where were you in that lineup? 140th. <laughs> yeah. So I beat one guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that poor salt. <laughs> he must have been thrilled when you became the champion. Uh, <laughs> so happy for you. Because when you started, when you were coming 140th, you must have thought, well, I'll never be wearing that yellow jersey. Yeah, definitely. That, that race was purely survival, just trying to get to the finish. Um, well, it started out trying to do one week try and do finish a mountain stage and then you're in it and you kind of just keep going and next thing you know you're in Paris and uh, that was like a dream already you know because I'd grown up as a kid watching it on TV and suddenly like you know when that camera angle you, you're the other side of the camera I'm actually in that group like racing yeah. rather than sat at home in Cardiff on my front carpet you know like <laughs> watching so um, yeah it was insane but um, then obviously to this year's yeah, Bonkers, I mean, a yeah. fantastic, an amazing achievement. But really, the book, you don't think I'd like to do that. Because it's not just the training, the testing, it's the injuries. I mean, you've broken so many things. Yeah, so, um, I've done my scaphoid, I've done my ribs, my collarbone, ruptured my spleen, had that taken out in Sydney, actually, in Australia. Oh, sorry. Um, this is all from... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not blaming you. <laughs> This is all from cycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Falling spleen off. was even just training, and the guy in front of me didn't see this big metal. Like, I don't know how, he must be blind, but <laughs> it went into my front wheel and I fell on my bars and that was <sighs> just... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we've, got got the oh! we've got a picture of you here. Now, what, what have you broken here? Oh, that was my pelvis. No! Oh. Are you yeah. sure no. you can cycle? <laughs> <laughs> Surely that's stabilised. No, no, but tell them the rest of the story. I think that's enough no, no, now. Wait. You've done it. Fantastic. <laughs> no, but wait, no, he breaks his pelvis, no. though. You break your pelvis, oh. and then what happens? Well, I carried on. So, basically, that was stage one of 2013 tour. So, it's at the top of my pelvis. So, it's not like... It's not the... The bit that rotates when you're pedalling. Yeah, you're not sat on it. So, mm. the doctors <gasps> were like, oh, you're not going to do any damage by Ooh. riding, so if you can put up with the pain, oh. crack on. So, it's kind of a bit like a... You know, wow. Um, and, but you had to do that for your team, because if you dropped out, then your team was screwed. Yeah, I'd been training for that all year, and I was part of the team. Like, it's a bit like uh, in a football team, for instance. You know, you have your defenders, your midfield, and, and it's the same in a cycling team, in a way. You know, you have your jobs throughout the day, and I was part of that, and I trained all year for that, and I really wanted to be a part of it. So it was like, well, I'm still here, so I might as well start tomorrow and try and... Fuck bit. the team, you've broken your pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's quite a good note from your doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're ready for childbirth now. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And, <laughs> My uh, women? <laughs> but it is that interesting thing where you are, you're cycling as individuals, <clears throat> but you are a team. Like, yeah. And is somebody assigned, like, the best? Someone's supposed to be the leader of the team? Yeah, going into the race, generally, you have your one leader. And, and you weren't... Is it true you weren't meant to be the leader? No, I kind of flicked him a bit. But How did that go? No, it was... <laughs> it, was it was good, actually. As you cycled past him. <laughs> 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 so, like, Formula One, they're under team orders to, to let you take the lead. Yeah, well, I was lucky in the fact the team let me race. You know, I went yeah. there to... It was my main goal all year. And Chris Froome was the leader. He's won it four times previously, so obviously he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And, you know, they had their bets on him, but I was allowed to do my own thing and see how it went. And obviously the, it went pretty well. <laughs> for, for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, start laughing. Uh, uh, now, of all the nights for you to be here, a very good night, because obviously a lot of keen cycling fans on the sofa, but perhaps none more so than oh, no. Nicole Kidman. Uh, because Graham, who can forget? You're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Uh, I did. Who can forget I'm Nicole Kidman's seminal performance in the 1983 cycling classic, BMX Bandits? <laughs> oh, there she is. Uh, yeah. Uh, you must. This. You must. This is all your house. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> did, did, you, did you? Were you good at BMX? Is that how you got the part? No, I was good at acting. <laughs> was that required? Um, actually, well, <laughs> they actually... There is a big... I could do a, a few of the stunts. I remember being terrified. Um, but then they did have a boy who wore a wig and a bra. <laughs> <laughs> who was a BMX champion who would step in every now and then. Well, Only every now and then. Yeah, and I hear uh, Russell Crowe is a big fan of this film. Oh. Um, he. Are you referring to... Yes. The T-shirts, yeah. yeah. No, he likes teasing me. So, um, I showed up on Boy Erased and all of the crew were wearing BMX bandits. Garen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Garen. G doesn't Geraint. know what Geraint. you're talking about. Garen. G. 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 <laughs> Garen. Uh, no, it's a bit of a pleasure to have you. Good luck with the book and uh, good luck with next year. Are you training already for next year? Or are you training yeah. all the time? No, I've had, like, longer than normal off. Um, You've earned it. Yeah, I'm back on it now. You're, you're back training now? Yeah. Well, listen, good luck next year. Uh, you're on Thomas, everybody. <laughs> All right. It is time for music. These boys have sold nearly 45 million albums worldwide with 12 number one singles and are now celebrating 30 years of chart domination with a Greatest Hits album and brand new tour. Here performing Greatest Day, it is Take That! <laughs> Take a seat, boys. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. That was thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. There's nearly room for everyone. Oh, what a wonderful <laughs> laugh at the end. Oh, no, but you seem tall I now. feel taller than everybody. Yes. <laughs> oh, take that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Odyssey. Odyssey is the name of the album, which is yes. sort of a greatest hits album. Yes. Yes. So it's on the vinyl, but, ladies and gentlemen, you can tell they've been in the business 30 years. It's also a cassette, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, 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 I know. It even comes with its own pencils. You can, <laughs> you can rewind it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's genius. Does anybody have a cassette? Can I just ask on, on this Somewhere table? Somewhere in the drawer, I'll have one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Do you have a player? Yeah. 
You still have a player? Yeah, my husband yeah. does. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah, brilliant. he still sometimes records because okay. he loves the sound. Yes, yeah, and you listen too. to the yeah. song back, so yeah. he'll record on a tape. I'm going to buy a cassette player to go with my cassette. Like yes. <laughs> it's officially the worst format of music ever made, cassette. Yeah. No, well, mini-disc, meant, meant surely. To be, no, because that was digital, so... In sound terms, you mean. Oh, I In yeah. sound yeah. terms. Yeah. Yeah. They really stretched. The poorest yeah, yeah. Yeah. sound. Well, anyway, your crappy cassette is out today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, no, you know, they're modern now. They're much nice better quality. Hold, they're they're nice much better quality, much better quality. And, uh, and uh, an Odyssey <laughs> tour, presumably. Next year. Yes. Uh, when does that kick off? Do you uh, know? In April. Please come and see. I know, I so will. I know. What did I tell you while they yeah. while you were performing? I was chatting. Are you uh, talking? I was. <laughs> uh, no, I, was saying, I was asking well, if they'd ever seen you live, and I was just saying how amazing it is. Uh, thank you. But 30 years on, ladies and gentlemen, the dance moves remain unaffected. Uh, you are still dance captain, I assume, Gary? Of course. Yes. Head of choreography. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love know. a cleaning session. <laughs> <laughs> I need to clean this up, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? No, no I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, but Howard, you can... Apparently, you are still master of all the dance moves. You can... all the... I certainly am. And will no. you... You doing the rolling on the lino and all those things. A bit of that, yeah, a bit of break dancing, a few back backflips here and there. Um, yeah, I think it's something that whenever we go on tour, we always like to challenge ourselves, and I think it would feel a bit strange for us to come off stage and not be sweating our butts off. Um, yeah. We like that feeling of coming off absolutely soaking, so... Gary's nodding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> backflip. Yeah. Unfo unfortunately, a, a few years ago, Howard punctured his lung doing a backflip in Sweden or somewhere, Switzerland? Yeah. No, it was in uh, Spain. Spain. <laughs> Be going with S. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so we're not sure we're, 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 the insurance won't allow backflips anymore. Hey, he broke a pelvis. Yeah. Oh, a pelvis? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Twice. Twice. Yeah. Mm. Take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep working. I, keep that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, so, uh, you're going on tour and the album's out today. Good luck with it all. Thank and you. we're so pleased you're in our world. Take that, everybody! Yeah. Wow, that's a packed That's a lot of people. Uh, that is nearly it. But before we go, we've got time for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello! Hi. Hi, what's your name? I'm Rosanna. Rosanna? Yeah. Rosanna, lovely. And uh, where are you from, Rosanna? Uh, I'm from Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire? Mm -hmm. And is that where you used to live? No. Live here. Well, oh, you live here in the in the big smoke. Mm -hmm. And what do you do in the big smoke? Mm. I am a graphic design student. <gasps> oh, of graphic design. <laughs> what's what's your favourite font? <laughs> <laughs> Times New Roman every day. <laughs> what did she say? Something about Times Roman. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Wow. Give her a go. Yeah. OK, quickly, <laughs> off with your story. OK, so I was 14 and I was working as a waitress in this big country house and there was a wedding with about 120 guests and the chef said to me that the pudding was creme brulee with fistulis, which is like a small orange fruit. Um, but I misheard her saying creme brulee with syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> so I then went and asked all of the 120 wedding guests if they wanted creme brulee with syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, sadly, the father of the bride complained to the management and I got fired. No! <laughs> oh, you can walk! <laughs> wow! If you'd like to have a go in the big red chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website. <laughs> uh, please say a huge thank you to all of my guests. Take that! <laughs> Joe Lysett! <laughs> Stephen Fry! Week with Queen of Pop Cheryl, actor Ruth Wilson, funny lady Dawn French, Black Panther star Michael B. Jordan, and comic genius Steve Carell. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>